I'm Phil Fothergill, and welcome to the Global Banking and Finance Awards. The Global Banking and Finance Review Awards were created in 2011 to recognize companies of all sizes prominent in particular areas of expertise within the global financial community. The awards reflect innovation, achievement, strategy, plus the progressive and inspirational changes taking place in the financial sector. Well, SEB Asset Management have won the Global Banking and Finance Award for Best Asset Manager Sweden in 2014. So to celebrate that fact, we're talking now to Peter Branner, who's the Chief Executive Officer of SEB Investment Management AB, and also Maurice Vent, who's Head of the Institutional Client Service. We join them now in our Stockholm studio. Well, congratulations, gentlemen, and welcome to the Global Banking and Finance Awards event. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Well, firstly, gentlemen, as you know, SEB Wealth Management has seen an increase in assets from 143.1 billion euros in 2013 to a present 158 billion. Moritz, if I, I may start by asking you, what do you see as the major contributing factor to this highly successful growth? Yeah, thank you uh, very much. Uh, obviously, we're, we're a bit proud over that achievement. Uh, it's quite a significant growth. Um, uh, and there, with assets under management, there are several factors that play into that. Uh, one of them is uh, obviously our sales activities, we'll say our net sales statistic, which has developed very positively uh, between uh, in, within that period. Uh, so we've seen very strong sales in the institutional client segment, we'll say with our larger institutions. Uh, we're making a very good progress, uh, for instance, in the alternative space, where we're selling private equity, real estate, and hedge funds to those clients. Um, we're also seeing very good uh, sort of growth in our traditional fixed income business, uh, where we're having a lot of client activities, um, but even in, 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 in equity strategies. Uh, so it's been, for the institutional client segment, a, a very good year. Um, on top of that, uh, we are sort of a universal bank, so we have a captive distribution as well. Uh, we'll say we have distribution to our retail channels, private banking, and also our life insurance side. And all of these have also uh, seen very good business activities, and that uh, is very clearly visible in asset management as well, uh, because a lot of the, uh, uh, the products sold in these channels are either funds or uh, are visible in the assets under management figure we're referring to. Uh, so all in all, you could say that most of the sort of distribution channels we have in this bank have seen a very good underlying growth uh, in yeah, between 2013 and 14. Well, as Maurice uh, referred to, I think we have seen growth in, in all our distribution channels. So, and, and our contribution from the, uh, the sort of investment side has rather been, I guess, to, to increase the quality of the composites of uh, services that we do. So, and in particular, you can say that we have grown our competence in both fixed income and equity and alternatives. And this has made it possible for Morris to do the distribution that, that we have seen. So it's really adding to the, to the, uh, to the uh, overall perception of quality of our teams that is our contribution from my teams. I see. So what would you say are the benefits institutional investors can gain from CTAs or commodity trading advisors? Yeah, CTAs is, uh, well, it, it used to be a niche strategy in the hedge fund world, um, has sort of developed uh, over the last uh, century or so into a bit broader asset class. Um, and the main benefits for CTAs uh, are, are that uh, the correlation to other asset classes is very low. Uh, CTAs can also be used as some kind of tail risk hedge, uh, which is sometimes very difficult for our institutional clients uh, to do otherwise. Uh, and they have quite neat uh, risk return uh, uh, aspects in clients' portfolios. We'll say you, you, can, you can enhance the risk return profile of portfolios by adding CTAs. Um, we've very clearly seen those benefits in the crisis years in 2008 and 9, where not all the CTAs, but many CTA strategies had a, a very positive, strong return based on, on, on the depreciation of the markets overall. Uh, they've been a bit sort of quiet at the last years, but this year we've again seen a pickup in the strategy. So many of our clients to this day have an allocation to CTAs because of that reason. 
Well, I think that uh, Moyes was on on the sort of the things we've seen on the client side. I think why why SCB can participate in this area is because we, as one of very few uh, large banks, have our own hedge fund teams. And if you look at the reason why hedge funds have broken up during the last many years, more or less half of that is due to what we can call compliance issues or administrative issues, uh, fraud, etc. And, and not so much that the hedge fund strategy itself uh, didn't work out. And, and I think as a large bank, we are sort of guaranteeing our investors that, that we have uh, order in, in the boutiques that we run, including the CTA structure. And I think that is a major contributor to the sort of the quality perception of the CTA structure that we run in-house. Well, all of us are, are plagued by regulations in way or another. But looking at your own business, how are regulations changing the investment landscape for alternative investments? I think they are affecting us the same way as they affect everybody else. The main difference is that as a large bank in our region, uh, the cost for us to include these new regulations are lower per assets than for many other players. And, and what you see is that many smaller players are being wiped out. So as a medium large player in the region, we, we actually benefit from this. And, and I think Morris can tell you about how we are able to capture business in the slipstream of regulation. Uh, so that is one thing. The other thing I would we refer to is the fact that we have done this regulation in the usage space for many years. And adding now the regulation for AIFs um, or alternative investment vehicles is not such a big deal for us. We've already done this for quite a while, and the new regulation is pretty similar. So I think for us, it's, it's, of course, it's an investment, uh, but I think it's overall it has been something fairly easy for us to implement. Um, I think if we go back just uh, one step here, so saying we've seen over the last century that the allocation of our clients into alternatives has increased. Um, and we see that trend to continue in the future. So there's been an enormous demand from institutional clients uh, and other clients as well on alternative products. Uh, so the assets under management in, in alternatives has exploded, you could say, over the last uh, 10 years. Um, very often uh, in offshore vehicles, um, both in the hedge fund and private equity world, something now we're seeing regulation and clients need for transparency um, and some kind of safety net as well. I, I don't want to just talk about Madoff here, but uh, th there have been several uh, players in, in the field that have blown up uh, and clients feel that they need to know that they're on top of or we are on top of the investments. So the regulation is very often centered around making sure that we can provide our clients with the stability and uh, peace of mind uh, that they're invested uh, in, in a good strategy. Uh, so AIF is doing exactly that, I would say, as Peter was into a little bit, um, giving a better framework maybe for these investments. So uh, and we're, we're seeing that there's a clear trend that uh, offshore is turning into onshore and more and more our clients demanding that of us. Um, then I think for SCB this means uh, that uh, we maybe had to invest a little bit more in our infrastructure. But we are a larger player. I would say we're the leading asset manager in, in the Nordics when it comes to alternatives, the full sort of offering. There are a lot of boutique houses offering uh, different asset classes and alternatives. But we have a, a very nice uh, overall package we can offer to our clients. And that's why they chose or have chosen us and continue to choose us uh, when it comes to that. Um, so I see this as a very positive trend for SCB and I think for our clients as well because it makes the market more transparent and I think with that better as well moving forward. Then you have little sort of added benefits like it's much easier to passport AIFs in different markets. It used to be quite complicated before. So if you're AIF regulated as an asset manager, uh, it's much easier to broaden your distribution also inside Europe, especially I'm, I'm talking about now. Uh, was much more complicated before. So now we are all knowing what's sort of on the tin and all the different regulators in, in each country, they know what this is uh, and feel comfortable with it. So it's easier for us to bear out our competence also in non-Nordic markets, which we're working on quite actively. 
Well, as you know, SEB Asset Management provides a broad range of investment solutions. How do your investment professionals assist clients in building and monitoring the investment portfolios? Yeah, that's what I think we call fiduciary asset management here at SEB. We'll say this is more of a, a, a partnership with our clients uh, where the investment side is A side. Um, but because of the regulation we just talked about, and of course the, the need to uh, to have their house in order, our clients require more services from us than just the investment side. So it's reporting, it's uh, solvency, um, and uh, accounting services, which we provide uh, uh, at the same time as uh, managing portfolios. Now, managing portfolios for us is, uh, uh, of, of course, uh, the the backbone of our business. Uh, we're an asset manager, after all. Uh, but combining all that makes life for our clients simpler. Many clients do not have the infrastructure or do want to, to build up that infrastructure uh, internally. Um, so they, they come to us uh, with a real solution uh, type of uh, approach, uh, which, we can, which we can provide to them. Um, so uh, I would say really that, there's, uh, that, that is the backbone of our business and, and also the, the, the best way for us to, to drive forward business together with our clients in, in many sort of service areas. Um, and uh, that's what we're a bit proud of actually. Uh, I think we manage close to 40 billion euros uh, in, in the fiduciary uh, side of things um, and that's something I want to grow moving forward. I think at SAP we, we highlight at least two things in the area of solutions to clients and, and more it's talked about the institutional segment which is very specific but if we take the broader market so the retail and the private banking area we have several funds to address the needs of each of these client segments and apart from obviously putting together what we can call multi-asset class products and, and making sure that we align so the risk profile of the clients with the, with the product that we offer them. On top of that, we also have at SAB what we call an open guided architecture. So apart from all the in-house teams that we populate our solutions products with, we also have a range of externally managed funds and mandates that are selected by an independent team in the bank, uh, which has also been ranked very highly in the industry. And together with these sort of best of breed external products, uh, our in-house facilities will then populate our solutions production, production range. So I, I think that is a pretty unique um, offering to our clients. And obviously what we, what we have prepared for by doing that is MIFID II and also to make sure that our client advisors are not just salespeople but true client advisors. Well, gentlemen, it's been fascinating. Thank you for joining us from Stockholm in Sweden. And once again, congratulations on the award. Thank you very much indeed. It's been our pleasure. It's been our pleasure, yeah.